Good morning and welcome to worship this morning. It is the, the seventh Sunday of Easter today and we gather uh, in this service of the word to hear the good news as we head into next week's celebration, which is going to be our Pentecost celebration. We just remind everyone that next Sunday it would be appropriate to wear red on Pentecost, which is the birthday of the church. And we begin once again into our summer season with our Pentecost uh, messages, learning about what it means to be the church in the world. And today's gospel text, as we gather around our worship today, is really a send-off from these last several months that we've been working uh, through Lent and Easter. Uh, if you go all the way back to the Transfiguration story right before we, joined, we jumped into Ash Wednesday and then went through the whole Lenten season, we've taken time out of our year as we go through our normal readings of the Bible uh, on a weekly basis where we work through various, um, walk through the Bible really, uh, but during these seasons, we take very seriously the death and resurrection of Christ. And in sort of a final capsulization of what we've got and what we've been doing, today's gospel text reminds us that Jesus came for us and, and created the church for the sake of the world. And that the church is a very different and special entity in the world that has very specific work to do in the world. And so today's gospel text really opens that up and I think brings us into a place where next week as we hear the words of Pentecost uh, and the Holy Spirit's in breaking into the church and the creation of the church, uh, we're really going to have some, uh, some framing around that as we go through this. So welcome to worship this morning. My hope is, is that this uh, service of the word um, connects with you whenever you're able to connect with it and that the word does its job, uh, that the word of God might hit your heart and bring you to love and to nurture and to care those in your life and those in our congregation as we um, work together to be the body of Christ. So blessings to you on this day. Welcome to worship as we celebrate this end of this Easter season together. Christ our Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Welcome to worship, everybody. to 
We begin our worship this morning with our thanksgiving for the gift of baptism that we've been doing throughout the season of Easter. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Refreshed by the resurrection life we share in Christ, let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We thank you, risen Christ, for these waters where you make us new, leading us from death to life, from tears to joy. We bless you, risen Christ, that your spirit comes to us in the grace-filled waters of rebirth, like rains to our thirsting earth, like streams that revive our souls, like cups of cool water shared with strangers. Breathe your peace on your church when we hide in fear. Clothe us with your mercy and forgiveness. Send us companions on our journey as we share your life. Make us one, risen Christ. Cleanse our hearts and shower us with life. To you be given all praise with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God, now and forever. Amen. Let us begin our service with our opening song. This is How Great Thou Art, page 856. to thee. How great 
night shall come with shout of acclamation and take me home what joy shall fill my heart then I shall bow in humble The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray. Gracious and glorious God, you have chosen us as your own, and by the powerful name of Christ, you protect us from evil. By your spirit, transform us in your beloved world, that we may find our joy in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Good morning. Today's first reading comes from Acts chapter 1, 15 through 17, and 21 through 26. 
In those days, Peter stood up among the believers. Together, the crowd numbered about 120 persons and said, Friends, the scripture has to, has to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit through David foretold concerning Judas, who became a guide for those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered among us and was allotted his share of this ministry. So one of the men who have accompanied us during all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day that he was taken up from us, one of these must become witness with us to his resurrection. So they proposed two, Joseph called Barsabbas, who was also known as Justus, and Matthias. Then they prayed and said, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which one of these two you have chosen to take the place in this ministry and apostleship from which Judas turned aside, Judas turned aside to go to his own place. And they cast lots for them, and that and the lot fell on Matthias, and he was added to the eleven apostles. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hey everyone, the psalm of the day is Psalm 1. Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the way of sinners, nor sat in the seats of the scornful. Their delight is in the law of the Lord, and they meditate on God's teaching day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season with leaves that do not wither. Everything they do shall prosper. It is not so with the wicked. They are like chaff which the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked shall not stand upright when judgment comes, nor the sinner in the counsel of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked shall be destroyed. Today's second reading is from 1 John chapter 5, verses 9 through 13. If we receive human testimony, the testimony of God is greater. For this is the testimony of God that has testified to his Son. Those who believe in the Son of God have the testimony in their hearts. Those who do not believe in God have made him a liar by not believing in the testimony that God has given concerning his son. And this is the testimony. God gave us eternal life, and this life is in his son. Whomever has the son has the life. Whomever does not have the son of God does not have life. Right? I write these things to you who believe in the name of the son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. The word of the Lord, thanks be to God. Our gospel reading from today is, or for today, is from John chapter 17, beginning in verse 6. And this is sort of the goodbye prayer that Jesus does in front of the disciples as he prays to God, whom he calls the Father or Abba, and he prays in this very intimate way to God in front of the disciples, about the disciples. And we really have sort of a handoff and a, and a deep, heartfelt um, moment where we get to really see Jesus' uh, uh, hopes and pleas for the sake of this community that God has called through him. Uh, and so as we get ready for Pentecost next Sunday, as we really take a note of what this Easter season really means, Notice, notice what Jesus is praying for his church and uh, what they're going to become and the relationship that the church is to have with God, the creator. Uh, John chapter 17, beginning in verse six. Praise to you, O Christ. I spelled out your character in detail, Jesus says to God, uh, to, to the men and women you gave me. They were yours in the first place. Then you gave them to me. And they have now done what you said. They now know beyond the shadow of a doubt that everything you gave me is firsthand from you. For the message you gave me, I gave them. And they took it and were convinced that I came from you. They believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I'm not praying for the God-rejecting world, but for those you gave me. For they are yours by right. Everything mine is yours and yours mine, and my life is on display in them. For I'm no longer going to be visible in the world. They'll continue in the world, 
while I return to you. Holy Father, guard them as they pursue this life that you conferred as a gift through me so they can be one heart and mind as we are one heart and mind. As long as I was with them, I guarded them. In the pursuit of the life you gave through me, I even posted a lookout and not one of them got away, except for the rebel bent on destruction, which was the exception that proved the rule of scripture. Now I'm returning to you. I'm saying these things in the world's hearing so my people can experience my joy completed in them. I gave them your word. The godless world hated them because of it, but they didn't join the world's ways, just as I didn't join the world's ways. I'm not asking that you take them out of the world, but that you guard them from the evil one. They are no more defined by the world than I am defined by the world. Make them holy, consecrated with the truth. Your word is consecrating truth. In the same way that you gave me a mission in the world, I give them a mission in the world. I'm consecrating myself for their sakes, so there'll be truth consecrated in their mission. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace, mercy, and peace to you. As we gather in this uh, end of our Easter season together, I think it is an awesome day, an awesome text to remind ourselves of what our mission is and to really recognize why mission is central to life as a Christian fellowship and why it's essential to life as a Christian church. Um, and that a church without mission ceases to really be this ecclesia that Jesus is talking about today, as he as he prays this prayer for for the in the disciples' presence and for the disciples, which are soon to be the apostles, where they're soon to become the church, um, he's recognizing that he can't stay any longer, and that this whole um, creation of the church is why he came in the first place, so that you and I could have the unique and knowing relationship with God the Creator. And that we could implore and ask God to help us in the corners of our lives and in the corners of lives of people that we know, in the corners of lives of the people that we've been blessed to know about, that we can use our prayer muscles, our service muscles, our hands, our feet, our eyes to share the love that comes to each one of us through the relationship that God has given to us in Jesus. The light of Christ lives in you and me because of all this stuff that we talk about in church so that we can be a help to the hurting world. Why does the church exist? It exists so that the world can be reconciled and that Jesus needed the church to do the reconciliation work. Sort of like if you were going to have two pieces of metal and you wanted to fuse them together, you'd go to the welder shop and the welder would weld them together and do the job that a welder does. Or if you were going to have a, a computer problem and you were going to go to a computer technician, they'd get in and they'd start, you know, clicking around and looking around in your computer and they'd fix the computer because that's what a computer technician does. What does the church do? What is the reason for the church? Well, we've been hearing this over Easter and it's a very important message. And sometimes we forget what the reason for all of this is. Sometimes we think it's just about worshiping Jesus or singing some songs we like we're going through the motions of another week. But the truth of it is, is that this, this relationship that the church has with God is imperative for the sake of the world so that people can learn the ways of love, so that people can uh, be broken from the cycles of abuse or sin. Uh, and, that, and that's a huge word. And you understand why we use that word in the church, but it also is just such a clunky word. A better word for today might be brokenness. And when you take a look at someone's situation, um, whether they're in the church or out of the church, when a human being has a problem, usually there's layer upon layer upon layer of issues with that problem. And so to throw the word, you know, sin, it, it seems very generic. And I think that's where we are called in 2021 to be a lot more nuanced in our understanding of how to use language and of what we're trying to do with it. And so over these past weeks, 
in months as we've looked at issues like racism or, or gone through the study on sexism, part of the work uh, is unpacking each step or each piece of the brokenness so that we can talk about potential forgiveness and we can talk about reconciliation because that's the work of the church. Although I don't know if it actually is the work of the church. Sometimes it feels like that's the work of professional clergy. And then that we've got some sort of a, of, of a differentiation in the church about what we're supposed to be about. And I think that that's where a church like our saviors being in redevelopment has a very unique opportunity. We can continue to worship God through Jesus Christ. We can continue to be Christians and, and confess our creeds, but we're also learning how we have to unlearn some of our habits that come from our, 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 our heritage, our traditions, um, our, our race, as we've approached our level of our, our kind, our style of Christianity. And we have to maybe undo some of that stuff if you get into what Jesus's core ministry was, because what Jesus is looking for them and his prayer for his disciples is what? It's that they uh, exhibit this relationship and this discernment of the brokenness in the world and the call to become uh, made new uh, in our relationship to God and then to lead the world's change through that process. They will know we are Christians by our love, by our love. They will know we are Christians by our love. May our love be the thing that people notice. May the, the work of forgiveness and reconciliation of our lives be the thing that people uh, recognize as, uh, as important uh, to them. And may we realize that that's the gift that we're called to share. So we're not, we're not necessarily addressing people to join our church so they, can, so they can finally learn the creed and become a Christian. That seems to maybe have been a priority for a long time. And it's not that we negate the creed and we negate our theology. In fact, no, we teach it. But we don't connect with people necessarily with that. What we connect with is loving them, listening to them, praying for them, helping them. And that's going to happen in each one of our stories, in each corner of our lives. And so may the work we do as a congregation support everyone's work in their own little uh, corner of that work. And then as a body of Christ, may we come together, uh, make those stories known, celebrate the work that you're doing in our midst of raising up leaders. I think that's the powerful thing that God has been doing uh, since I've known all of you at Our Saviors as I'm watching people step up in new ways and change in their behaviors and learn and grow. Um, sometimes we go through conflict with that. Sometimes we joyfully go through it, uh, but that's life. And uh, may we be an example to the community about how to live together and be together and change together for the sake of this larger mission, which is to exist for the sake of the world. So that when the world uh, comes crashing around, we can stand strong and serve. We can be ready. We can be awake, as Jesus calls us to be. Blessings to you in this Easter message. May it apply to your heart uh, and to your own calling as we serve together and celebrate together the gift of the risen Christ in this Easter season. Blessings. Amen.
And now let us confess together our creed using the words of the humble creed as we finish up our, our Easter season together in this reflective way. It begins with the words, I believe in God, the creator of heaven and earth, who gave man and woman free will and entrusted this precious world to us. I believe in Jesus Christ, his son, our Lord, who was born in a manger by Mary, a woman of humble beginnings, refusing to seek power and turning away from the sword. He died for us, the Lamb of God. He descended into the darkest of all places, but rose again on the third day, bringing life and hope to all. I believe in Christ's humble spirit, conceiving the holy apostolic and universal church, which is among us and beyond us, before us and after us. I believe in a church that is compromised of, comprised of sinners and saints, imperfect and in need of grace yet blessed, the body of Christ. I believe in the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Prayers of Intercession Alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Holy God, in Christ Jesus, the joy of the church is made complete. Root the church in your word and unify us in Christ's body. Send us into the world as your loving people, ready to testify to your spirit at work. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Mighty God, the world is your handiwork, displaying your creative impulse. Seas teem with life, forests reach up to praise you, and the mystery of life lies deep in the soil. Guard and keep this world for the well-being of all your creatures. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Gracious Sovereign, those who follow your ways are like trees planted near streams of water established the leaders of nations and all in authority in your grace and truth. Strengthen them so that the people they serve will have abundant life. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Generous Savior, you befriend those who are suffering, poor, lonely, outcast, rejected, or sick. Grant healing and love to all in need. Give them tangible signs of your steadfast love. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Creator God, here in this community, we share the gift of praying, learning, and supporting one another. Give us thankful hearts as we claim the gifts that are unique to us and keep us from being envious of others with different gifts. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Saving God, your wonderful promise of the gift of eternal life in Jesus. Through the witness of those who have died in you, strengthen us now in this gift of life. We cherish the memory of your saints. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your ending goodness and mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now may the peace of Christ be with you all and also with you. Let us share the peace together with our loved ones and our friends and our families uh, and those who we need to connect with. May we hear the call to do that work of reaching out, uh, whether it's today, right now, or later this week. Um, let us live into our commitments to connect to God and to one another. Uh, and also, at this time, we receive our offering and just like to thank everyone for their continued giving and um, blessings to you as we go into this moment where we have some music and some opportunity to reflect on our offerings. Peace.
How great is our God. Sing with me. How great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. Let us pray. God of love, you call us beloved children and welcome us to your table. Receive our lives and the gifts we offer. Abide with us and send us in service to a suffering world for the sake of your beloved child, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now let's pray the prayer that Jesus teaches us how to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And now let's sing together our sending song. Good morning, our saviors. We will sing all verses except for three. Christ is alive, let Christians sing. The cross stands empty to the sky. Let streets and homes with praises ring. Love drowned in death shall never die. Christ is alive. Now let us receive a blessing together. May our, may our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus, the God of life, creator, redeemer, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. Share the good news. Alleluia. Christ our Lord is risen. He's risen indeed. Alleluia. Happy Easter, everybody, and have a great week.
mark his name in all 